Hi everyone and thank you for joining WCI Consulting's webinar. Today we're going to be going over uh, Business Objects 4.0 Universe. Uh, we call this an insider's guide. We're going to have our consultant Neil Dave go over a number of uh, kind of overviews and tips and tricks on the universe in general. Um, we try to keep these to about uh, 20 minutes long. We value your time. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and use the right-hand panel uh, under the questions option. Um, and uh, we'll try to get to them at the end of the webinar. Uh, you'll also uh, see both of our emails, uh, myself, Trent Wortham, and uh, Neil Davies at the end. And you can email us offline uh, after the webinar. Uh, with that being said, let's hand it over to Neil. and. Neil, go over Business Objects 4.0 Universe. Thanks, Trent. So, uh, yeah, the meet, the goal of today's meeting is to talk a little bit about the Universe Design Tool versus the Information Design Tool. Uh, for some of you guys that are familiar with the older versions of Business Objects, and within the older uh, versions of Business Objects, there was just a tool called Designer. Uh, now in 4.0, it's giving you a couple different uh, client tools, one of them here being the universe design tool that you can see on my screen, and the other one being the information design tool. So the main differences between the two, and this is the information design tool right here, um, one of the big differences between the universe design tool and the information design tool is that the universe design tool, it, it only looks at one connection for, or one data source to plug in your um, database or your data so that end users can look at the uh, look at the reporting data. Um, for information design tool, you have the ability to connect to multiple data sources to create one specific universe. So uh, just as a little bit of, a, if some of you guys are new to business objects, what the uh, universe design tool is going to allow you to do is it, it's a semantic layer that allows your end users or your report consumers to see the data behind the reports and not necessarily what you see here on the screen. Um, this is just for more of your uh, developers or your designers of uh, your um, within your company, ones that will be familiar with creating tables, uh, creating joins, and building a database schema for, for the end users. So that's one of the nice things about business objects is the fact that you have an ad hoc report, it's ad hocable to where users are allowed to simply drag and drop objects, what we call objects, in, onto a report panel and simply run those and then display the data that they're looking for without them looking at the back end data or back end of uh, business objects, what this is right here. Um, okay, so to get started, what I've just done, is I've looked at the, this is one of our sa uh, sample universes that come in with business objects 4.0. It's called the eFashion universe. And what this is doing is it's just simply, as you can see on my screen, we've got a table. We've got uh, several tables in here, and then they're joined up by just the simple lines right here. And so what we did here is we built a database schema. Now, one of the big questions is how do you get these tables on your screen? Well, that's where you have to connect to your database. And that's simply done by going to File and then going to Parameters. Or you can go to File and New. Actually, let's do it that way. File and new. <clears throat> and what this is going to do is going to bring up an, a screen here that's asking me what type of universe, what do you want to name the universe? So in here, I'll just go and name this universe test. And then we'll create a new connection. And what type of connection we want to do is we want to just create a secure connection. We'll just call this uh, connection name test. And then we'll go to next here. All right taking a second to come up. All right, and so this is the important thing I wanted to talk about. This screen tells me all the different data sources I can connect to. Um, if you expand like the IBM one, you can connect to DB2 sources in here. If I go to Microsoft, you can see that I can connect to Microsoft Access, uh, SQL Server, which obviously is a very popular one. Uh, we do have, now with 4.0, we do have NetTeza on here. Uh, NetTeza is a big one. You can definitely connect to NetTeza, NetTeza server. Uh, another popular one is Oracle. So you can connect your Oracle uh, databases on here. And let's see, we've got SAP. So SAP has, in 4.0, this is actually new, where you have a new data source of SAP, and you can connect to an SAP data source. 
And from this other list, you can see all the other ones on here. And so what you could simply do here, if you wanted to go through this process, is say, let's connect to a, a, a SQL Server database, so an ODBC connection. And so if I hit Next, I would just simply put in the username, password for that ODBC connection, and select the data source name. Now remember, in order for you to connect to a data source, that ODBC driver has to be created on either your local machine or on the VO server. That's very important. If you're connecting to a SQL, I'll say that one more time. If you're connecting to a SQL server or database, the ODBC driver has to be created on that machine in order for you to select it here and be able to connect to that, uh, that database. All right? So making, let's make the assumption that I've got the username and password selected. Um, I'm just going to back out of here and go into our one that we've got created in here. Um, so in here, we can uh, what once that's been uh, created, what you can do is you can test the connection to make sure. Well, in this case, it's not responding, but uh, in in order for this to work, you just test the, the source to make sure it's working properly. And then uh, once it's done, once it says what you should see is a message that says the server has is responding and the connection has been tested successfully. Once that's completed, on here, the main tabs in here that I want to talk about are under the query limits. This is under the control tab. And the control tab, you've got two major options here. One is limit size result set to, and the other one is limit execution time. So what this does, it allows the developer to have control over what type of queries are being run. Meaning, if you have end users that are trying to build ad hoc reports, and they're not exactly sure what um, objects they, they should be running against, what they can, what you can do is limit the result size or the number of rows that are being returned. And then the reason why this is important is the fact that if the user creates a report that's not um, not scalable to the universe, what could happen is that the report can build a or generate a runaway query where it just does not return uh, result sets at all, which causes your BO system to possibly crash. So you do have the ability here to limit the number of rows or you can limit the number of execution times. So you can have an execution time of five minutes. So that means that any uh, if, a if a user's running a report that runs past five minutes, it automatically stops, and that's your result set. And then on the bottom right side of, um, of the report, it'll say that this, this result set is par it's returned partial, uh, partial result set due to the fact that you've got controls in here as well. So that, to me, is a big one. Um, some of the other tabs you can look at here. Um, in here, you've got query allow uses of subqueries. Um, this universe it depends on how you want to put that on here. Uh, you've got some Cartesian product warnings in here. If you want to prevent them, you can select that or warn the user that once the report's being run, um, it's going to generate a Cartesian product. Okay. And now you have, and under the links, you've got add a link. This is to make this a sub universe. If that's if that's something you're looking for, or this is a uh, Created to another universe. That's an option in here. And then under parameters, you've got some other options here for parameters. These are uh, basic parameters that are uh, built in with business objects that you can use in order to um, facilitate this. And this is what's going to be shown. Um, like, for example, the in SQL, this uh, value right here will be shown within the SQL of the report. So if there's a report that's being generated, the in SQL allows for that. All right? So moving on, um, once you've created your, your parameters and you have a data source that it's pointing to, from there you can click on this table browser button. And what that does is it's going to allow you to uh, it's going to give you a list of tables. And all you would have to do is simply drag and drop those tables into your schema right here. And then from there you can build your join and then build all your different types of joins in here. Uh, from here, you can see we have an equal join. Um, down here, we've got shortcut joins on here. So you do have different options on here on how you can create your joins. So if I double-click on this one, you'll see that I've got an option of it tells me here's a join. Um, I can detect the cardinality that, they, that I want on this type of join. And then it just tells you it lists the name of the join right here. And if I want to also uh, create an outer join, I can do that. Or I can create a shortcut join depending on how you want to set that up. All right? Okay, so once you've built your tables and you've built your joins, the, op, the, the pan right here is called your classes or your objects um, on here. This is where the users will 
see this part whenever they build the business objects report. They obviously, like we talked about, will not see this option here or this area. But what they'll see here is the classes. And this is where you build your objects for the end users to um, be able to report again. Okay, so these first five, these top five are called classes. And it's just what a class is is simply an organization. It just organizes all the objects that are being used. And it's a category that allows you to organize all your objects below here. For example, here under time period, if I expand this box here, or expand the, um, expand the class, you'll see that these are the different time periods that I have. I have a year, quarter, month, week, and holiday. So these icons denote to the left of these objects are called dimensions. What dimension is, is just simply everything, it's, it's just an object that allows you to uh, re report data again. So whenever I display this year on here, it's going to play, display the number of all the years. For example, 2001, 2002, 2003, so on and so forth. Same with month. This is going to return the month number on here. Uh, on here. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 12. All right? So that's what a dimension is doing for you. Now the other option you have here is I'm just going to click on measures down here, and these are your um, measures that these are more your calculated objects here. Meaning this is something you would perform like a min max. Um, you can perform sums and counts against these different objects. So a lot of universes may have something of a count um, to where you would have to create a count of how many quantities were sold, um, or you can have margin and summing all the margins. So that's how measures are different than dimensions, the fact that these objects are used to as more mathematical and more of your uh, cumulative um, objects. Okay? Next objects we have on here is I'm going to go back to the time period, and then um, under year, you'll see a detail. This, or this object, the screen object, is called a detail. What that tells me is it's basically a more detail about the actual object itself. Uh, just tell me that, okay, this under year we have physical period, uh, and so this gives me more information about the year object itself. All right? The last type of object we're going to talk about is a filter. So if I click here at the bottom right corner, you'll see another um, screen, or it, it, it takes me, it toggles to a different screen. And under here, these are called predefined filters. All right? So this is basically, if you look at it, if you think about it from a SQL statement, you'll think about this as going directly to your where clause. And so what this is doing is just basically telling me that, okay, which product, this is a predefined filter that the user will select whenever they're building the report. Um, ideally, when we're building reports as a best practice tip, it's ideal that you create pre, as many predefined filters as you can. The reason being is that it's, this allows for a more, um, uh, your better performance against your reports as opposed to creating your report and then creating your report filters on after the data is refreshed. So as a recommendation, if you're building universe, if it's, at, if it's possible for you to, to build a predefined filter, just do that so whenever the user, uh, when the report's being refreshed, it automatically goes through the filter data and then you have a, a better result for that. Okay? So those are the four big options here. Once again, we've got dimensions, we've got details, we've got measures, and then we've got predefined filters on here. Okay? So if I opened up one of these objects, just simply double clicking on it, that's where I determine what uh, table, I'm sorry, what table, yeah, what table and what column that that table is going to. And that's where that select statement comes into play. So again, if you look at a SQL statement, you think about that the, these year objects or all these objects here are going to be in your select statement. All right? And so this is just simply taking the objects that are built into, um, or the ta it's looking, it's pointing at the tables that were put into my, um, or the tables that are being brought in here, and then just simply uh, defining the actual tables that they're coming from. All right? So that's where that select statement comes from. You can also create a where statement as well for here. Um, under properties, it tells you what you want to qualify this as, a dimension, a measure, detail, and obviously in this case it's a dimension. And then for here, you have list of values. This tells me if a report, if an object needs to be uh, displayed with the list of values. So if a user is being prompted, for example, if I create a report that said, what year does this report need to be reported? Uh, what year would you like to see? 
I can get a list of values that says, okay, I can select between 1999, 2000, 2001, 2002, so on and so forth. That's just dependent on what type of database I have here. All right, under advanced, you've got the different types of security. Now, what this is very beneficial for is if you want to kind of lock down your security for objects within a uh, universe, for example, uh, salary information, social security numbers, those would be two uh, examples here where you can just say that, okay, somebody that has an above, uh, if we select this object as private, what that would say, or I'm sorry, let's say as restricted, what that will allow me to do is say that anybody that has a restricted access or above can view this object. Anybody that has below cannot view that object. So that's one way you can filter out users that are um, running reports against that. So that's kind of a nice security feature. Um, down here, it can be used for, for the result set, condition, or sorting. So for, for example, if you wanted a report, or I'm sorry, an object not to be displayed in the result set, um, you can set that. If you want it not to be in a condition or a sort, you can you can justify that, or you can um, modify that if, if need be. All right. So keys and source information are something we don't really need to talk about right now. A um, couple other things I wanted to talk about in here. Uh, one of them would be under uh, if I went to tools and manage security, and this kind of goes back to adding more depth or more secure information on your universe. This is called the Managed Access Restriction Screen, or we like to call it Row-Level Security. What this allows you to do is if you're having multiple users um, have access to a specific universe and you want to, again, limit the type of security, this is just an extra layer of security. You can limit the result or the row returns that they're supposed to see. For example, if a user is only supposed to see maybe, out of a good example of this would be cost centers. If they're only allowed to see maybe two or three cost centers and the cost center object itself returns, let's say, 10 or 20, you can actually restrict that user or that group to ensure that they only see two or three of those cost centers as opposed to all 10 or 20 of those cost centers that the, uh, the database would report against. So that would be one example that you can use managed restrictions again. Very, very powerful. Um, one of the last things I want to show you for uh, under Universe Design Tool is under if I went to Tools and Options, and then what I could do is I can print this to PDF, and what that allows me to do is it tells me it lists all my parameters, it lists all my objects, conditions, hierarchies, table joins, context, and if you want to put full descriptions, you can do that. What, what that's going to allow you to do is that if you wanted to have a physical printout, of what all information is in here, you can get that physical printout by just going to File, Save As. And then if I place this, let's say, on my desktop and then change the save type to PDF, what that's going to allow me to do is that I can save that report or save that universe and into a PDF format and to where it's going to list out all my universes, it's going to list out all my objects, list out all my tables, all my uh, joins. Okay? So that's kind of nice to have if you just wanted a physical document of what was uh, done on the universe, you can have that on here. Okay, so that's basically what the universe design tool is. Uh, the other tool that we need to talk about briefly is the information design tool. Now, uh, if you remember correctly, what I did is when I went to file parameters, I'm trying, back in the universe design tool, I'm only pointing to one specific data source, which in this case will be the eFashion universe. Um, I've got a database on here called, um, which is called the eFashion database. This only allows me to look at one specific universe and only bring in this information here against that database. Now, if I wanted to bring in multiple data sources, I could do that with an information design tool. All what the information design tool does is it creates projects for you. You create a project, you create a business layer, and then you build in a data foundation. What those three things do is that your project is basically organizing your, your business layer and your data foundation into one, um, one area. And then from there, you're allowed to create multiple data sources. So it's, it's obviously the layout's a little bit different than the universe design tool. But in here, you're able to create multiple data sources by simply uh, creating projects and selecting that against a um, you create a project, and then you go that against the data foundation, and then you can build your business layer off of that. So that's simply, that's what it does in, in a nutshell um, with your information design tool.
So very, very, very nice tool with 4.0. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the earlier versions of business objects did not offer that. But that's something that SAP was able to build, and I'm sorry, develop, and so it's, it's been very powerful for sure. Trent, um, that's all I had. I'm going to pass it back to you. Thanks, Neil. And let me pull up. And uh, Neil, I uh, appreciate that presentation. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and um, just let us know. Um, as always, I like to present our um, mission statement, I'll get to a feeling of where WCI is coming from, especially in relation to our clients and partners. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email either Neil or I. Um, we also are pretty excited about our new instantaccessbi.com. Uh, basically, during work hours, you have uh, access to a business intelligence consultant at their fingertips. Uh, you can talk to them, uh, find out any information you may need. Um, please visit our website, or you know, feel free to contact me if you have any questions about that. Uh, a little background about WCI for those of you who don't know: uh, we've been around since 1998. Um, we were doing crystal reports and dashboards before they were really uh, coined the term or it became popular, at least business intelligence. Uh, we've been partners with Business Objects and then SAP for a long time. Uh, the last two years, we've won Business Objects Partner of the Year uh, from SAP. Um, we're looking to do that for a third straight year. And uh, if you have any questions within the business intelligence realm, you know, feel free to ask us. Uh, give us, give you contact information again. Uh, Neil, I don't see any questions, so I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I'm sure we'll have some people, as always, bringing us offline. Again, as always, if you ever have um, input on our next uh, webinar uh, or you know a topic that you'd like to see covered, uh, we always love to get input from people, so please feel free to email us. And uh, thank you very much.